Welcome to the What's Happening Birmingham video podcast. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Jarvis Scott with What's Happening Birmingham. Today, I have the honor and pleasure of being with Mr. Bruce Ayers. Hello, Jarvis. How are you, buddy? Good, good, good. Owner of Stardom Comedy Club, Bruce, thank you for taking time out your day to sit down and we're going to talk about upcoming events and just what's been going on with the Stardom lately. Let me tell you, my pleasure. Uh, you know, what's happening at Birmingham.com, they're one of our sponsors here at the club. Uh, we run their career. When you come to a show at the Stardom, the first thing you're going to see before the show starts is what's happening in Birmingham's commercial, mm -hmm. and uh, we've been doing it for years. We're proud to be associated with Jarvis and uh, this group, and... Uh, Hey, we got a lot to talk about. Yeah, yeah. So first question is, how did you get your start? Well, you know, I've always been pretty much in the nightclub business. I started in 75, and we had discos, rock and roll clubs, cowboy bars. And then it was in 1983, I went to Atlanta, and they had just opened this club called The Punchline. I went in there, they had stand-up comics, and I go, man, that's what we need to do. So I came back, and we started doing comedy. It was... the April of 1983, and in the mm -hmm. beginning, you know, people didn't really know what a comedy club was. They'd never heard of a comedy club, and, and go to a comedy show, and they didn't know who the comedians were. Mm -hmm. So in the beginning, it was very difficult to get the people to really see acts that they really liked, because they didn't know who was out mm -hmm. there. In the, in the beginning, most of the acts came from New York and L.A. Mm -hmm. They're talking about subways and... Nothing really connected until mm -hmm. it was Thanksgiving week, 1983, mm -hmm. and I had this guy. He comes in, and right before he goes on stage, I say, listen, can you do me a favor? There's a guy in the audience who owns a Piggly Wiggly store. His name mm -hmm. is Andy Persiglio. You wish him a happy mm -hmm. birthday? Well, the guy, the comic, was Sinbad. Okay. It was his first time ever on stage in Birmingham. And he gets on stage, and he gets on Piggly Wiggly. Okay. He goes, what is there, Mr. Piggly, Mr. Wiggly? <laughs> and the, the magic that happened is everybody in the audience related to him. Oh, okay. And it just made sense. They were talking about things that I know. The next night, there's a bunch of ladies sitting on the front row, and he goes, well, what do you all do? And they said, we work the cosmetic counter at Rich's. Well, he just got into mm -hmm. that, talked to them for like 20, 30 minutes, and every night it was something different. And everybody started talking about, who's this Sinbad guy? He's something. So he becomes like our first star. Okay. So in February of the next year was the first time he ever headlined. And all, the, all of a sudden, there's a big story in the paper, Sinbad, Piggly Wiggly. And people are starting to notice him. And then with that, he started to notice the club. So that first year, Sinbad worked. 12 weeks, which is a lot of weeks, oh before he ever got on television. Mm -hmm. So he became our star, and without Sinbad, I don't think we ever would have okay. really made it because he's the one who put us on the map. Okay. You know, so that's really how we got started, and we were above a Chinese restaurant on Highway 31, okay. so we stayed there for a couple of years. Okay. Then in uh, 1995, December 12th, mm -hmm. 1995, which was my birthday, mm -hmm. we opened up a club on Green Springs. It was 430 Green Springs Highway. It was really a cool club. And, you know, we had Sinbad as our star, James Gregory. Mm -hmm. There was other guys coming in. But Sinbad was doing more movies. And so we were looking, man, there's got to be some other somebody else. Okay. So we had this guy from Cleveland that was doing pretty good. He was a feature act. And I mm -hmm. said to him one day, I said, you know, mm -hmm. I think you're the one. He had never headlined before, so I put this guy up to headline, and he was awesome. And you might have heard of him. Let me see what was his name. Hmm. Steve, Steve Harvey. Harvey. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, you know, the first time Steve Harvey ever headlined was in Birmingham. The okay. first town that Steve Harvey ever made it big was Birmingham. So Steve Harvey, as you know, went like this, mm -hmm. and he always came back. He was always loyal uh, to the club, and... Uh, you know, having guys like Sinbad and Steve, and then as time went on, it was DL, it was J. Anthony Brown, you know, it was all these guys, all the kings of comedy, other than Bernie Mac, we never got a chance to have Bernie. Mm -hmm. But then it became star-driven. And everything was going great at the club on Green Springs until 
1993, March 13th. And mm -hmm. if you look it up, there was a little bit of a snowstorm. I was 13 years old back then. Well, we were sold out that night, and it starts snowing and snowing. They closed the highway, so we had to close the club. Mm -hmm. So we went home, had a party. The next morning at 8 o'clock, the Homewood Fire Department called me and said, Bruce, we got bad news, really bad news. Mm -hmm. I go, what's going on? They go, your club's on fire. We can't get there. So much snow. And the whole shopping center pretty much burnt down. We lost everything. And uh, But, you know, our family came together. We had so many people in town who supported us and wanted us to build it back. So we went looking for a new place to put the club because mm -hmm. they weren't going to finish that shopping center. So we went out and uh, we stayed in a hotel for a couple of months. And then this building became available and we bought this building and uh, we moved in here September of 93 and uh, we've been here ever since. Okay, so I want to go back to how you had the unique, call it, Star Dome. Was that like kind of correlated with the comedians and everything? Well, you know, I'd like to say that, you know, this was one of my brilliant ideas that I would <laughs> name this place okay. Star Dome, wow. but uh, I got to be honest. Really, the, uh, the this building was originally called Carnegie's Dinner okay. Theater. That's okay. what it was. And then the next group that came in, they had the brilliant idea to name it Star Dome, which I think okay. is really, really a cool name. Okay. So when we bought the building, it was Star Dome. Okay. But I think, you know, with us, the stars, it just, I think it's a cool name. Okay. Can you tell the viewers how you and Ricky Smiley met and your friendship developed and everything? Sure. I mean, Ricky, uh, you know, he's like a son mm -hmm. to Cheech and I. And Cheech is uh, my wife. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we our business is a family business. It's myself, my wife, Cheech, my daughter, Dina, my daughter, Gina. Uh, we have one daughter in heaven who worked at the club. Her name was Sheena. Mm -hmm. Sheena, Dina, Gina. So, mm -hmm. um but anyway, uh, had to be 88 or so, you know, we, we do open mic and this young guy comes in and uh, talks to Cheech actually and says, I want to do open mic and Cheech said, okay. So he's up on stage and I'm in my office and Cheech goes, get out of here, you got to okay. come see this guy, okay. this Ricky Smiley guy. And he, you know, so many people get up and do open mic and really in the beginning it's really tough for them yeah. to be. But Ricky got a reaction the first time up. Okay. He was doing stuff about his grandmother, Bernice, and all this stuff. And there was just a magic mm -hmm. about him. Mm -hmm. The talent was oozing. Okay. Raw, but oozing. Okay. So, I mean, and he was so excited. He was just this young kid. And uh, so we kind of took him under our wing and said, Ricky, you know, here's what you got to do. And we kept putting him up and, you know, and guiding him. And, you know, mentoring him, Ricky, you got to stay clean. I always told Ricky that I thought all these other comics are dirty. I said, Ricky, I think you need to stay clean because okay. you don't have to be dirty. Mm -hmm. And you got all this great stuff, all this music in your show, and all the stuff about the church and your grandmother. Mm -hmm. You can be identified by that. And, you know, he listened. Mm -hmm. So as time goes on, he's, you know, we're getting him to open up for some of the guys. And then Steve Harvey was coming back. Mm -hmm. So I said to him, I said, listen, I think you're ready. I want you to open for Steve Harvey. Mm -hmm. He was all excited. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so the first night he shows up, and back then in the 80s, you know, everybody had these mm -hmm. nice, cool track suits. Yeah, and, you know, yeah, you remember those? those? Yeah. You know, and uh, so he comes in, he goes up on stage, and, and he does his bid, and he comes off stage. That's when Steve walked in. And Steve, who didn't know him, goes, I said, listen, I just want to tell you, if you're going to be on the show, you know, I really – would prefer if he dressed up, you know, I mean, and Ricky goes, yes, sir. And uh, so we were assuming that the next night yeah. Ricky would show up in a suit. Well, yeah. Ricky goes flying out the door. Oh, okay. Flying out the door, gets in his car, drives home. 20 minutes later, he's back with a nice suit on. Oh, okay. So when Steve Harvey, when he goes up to introduce Steve Harvey, he's got the suit on. Steve goes, After, and when Steve came off, they met, they became friends at that point, and you know, it's been a magical thing with Steve and Ricky. So Steve kind of took Ricky under his wing, okay. helped him get into radio. Mm -hmm. He, Steve was doing the Kings of Comedy tour then, and mm -hmm. he put Ricky on some of those shows. Okay. I mean, it was a great thing for Ricky 
to get under Steve's wing, and that's really how Ricky got in the mainstream okay. with with all the things. And you know, so we're so proud of uh, of Ricky and uh, for what he's done for the club and for Birmingham, and uh, you know. Great guy. Can you tell a little more about karaoke night? If you haven't had a chance, we definitely come every Monday. You know, Ricky. Ricky uh, last year came to me and he goes, Bruce, I got an idea. Okay. Here's what we're gonna do. On Monday night, I want to do karaoke. Okay. Well, let me tell. Let me get tell you a little bit more about Ricky. See, Ricky loves music. Okay. Not just hip hop music. Too. He likes classic rock. Okay. He, he likes every kind of music. Okay. And where Ricky got that was from his mom. Oh, okay. Who loves music? Okay. They love to dance. I mean, it's just, okay. I could tell you stories upon stories. But so anyway, so Ricky says, let's do this karaoke thing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we've done karaoke, you know, I've seen that. But the way Ricky does it, mm -hmm. I mean, there's nothing like yeah. it. There's magic in the room. And I said to Ricky, I said, you know, all these people that come, they're not like you're customers like your disciples. Because he's got them all dancing and swaying. And, you know, it's always fun. It's always positive. You know, he's got a dance group that's up there. So it's really a lot of fun. And, I mean, it went the whole year. Where it's coming back on mm -hmm. February the 4th. Yeah. Monday night, karaoke with Ricky. Off the trip. Okay, okay. So recently, you know, over the years, you have broken new comedians. Uh, most recently, you know, well, I'm gonna break them in, but a little Duval. Can you tell how it's like that relationship started? In Duval, over years? I love Duval, mm -hmm. and he has a special place for us. And mm -hmm. you know, the feeling is mutual. He, you know, back I don't know how many years ago it was, eight years ago, something like that. I would get a call from him every week. Mm -hmm. I didn't really know who he was, mm -hmm. but people had told me a little bit about him. He goes, "Please give me a chance. Give me a chance." I go, "How are we gonna sell tickets?" He goes, "Listen." There's this thing called social media. Uh -huh. I got all these followers. Yeah. You know, back then, not that many people did it. He was one of the first guys. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay. I got a weekend. It's the weekend that Alabama and all of our places. It's not the best weekend. Yeah, he says, yeah. give me that week. Give okay. me a chance. Okay. He came in and sold a ton. He sold 1,100 tickets. Man, right. It was amazing. Plus, he was so damn funny. It was just the most incredible thing. The next day, I called this big agency in L.A. and I said, you need to hire this kid. Mm -hmm. You need to represent him. Mm -hmm. He's got it. They hired him. They, they represented him. He started going like this, and it's been great. And, of course, we had him last year, luckily, right at the time when his uh, song just really hit. Yeah, smile. He went through the roof. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so that's how it is in this business. Mm -hmm. You know, you get guys that... You watch them start here, and then some of them just go through the roof, and uh, that's the joy of it for us when we get to see. Another example would be Lavelle Crawford, mm -hmm. who is, without a doubt, one of the funniest guys ever. Mm -hmm. This was probably 2001, 2002. I get a call from this guy in St. Louis. I got this new act. His name is Lavelle Crawford, and I knew the guy. Mm -hmm. And I said, all right, we'll bring him down. We'll see what happens. But, well, you know, you got to sell tickets. Yeah. But what they did, they came in, they did their own flyers, they were their own street team. Okay. After the show, they'd go to all the clubs and talk to okay. people. They just, but when he got on stage, it was magic. Oh, okay. It was a, this big guy, he looked, you know, different, and he was just so damn funny. So he was coming and he started building a little uh, rapport here at the club. Then, probably 2004 or so, 2005, they, <clears throat> HBO had this big deal where mm -hmm. they said, we're going to pick the top 21 clubs in mm -hmm. the country. We're going to ask the owners who your favorite funniest comedian is. Uh -huh. <coughs> We're going to invite them all to Vegas, uh -huh. and whoever wins is going to get an HBO special. Okay. So when HBO called me, they go, well, who's your guy? I go, mm -hmm. Lavelle Crawford. They, the guy goes, Lavelle Crawford? What the hell is Lavelle okay. Crawford? They didn't know who he was. Okay. He goes, yeah, you got to find. I said, listen, did you call me? Mm -hmm. Did you call me and ask me to give mm -hmm. you my funniest guy? He goes, all right. So Lavelle goes to Vegas. Okay. Who do you think won that contest? Lavelle. Who got an HBS special? <laughs> Lavelle. Lavelle Crawford. <laughs> okay. And that, from that point on, you know, it's been incredible with Lavelle. He was just here for New Year's Eve, and it, it just could not have been funnier. And he's one of those guys that every time he's on stage, it's different. 
I mean, okay. he can write material. It just pops out. Of, okay. You know, some guys, it takes a while to develop it. Lavelle is quick and sharp. He's very intelligent. And his stuff is just hilarious. So he's one of our all-time favorite guys. So now, the way things have changed now with social media, um, how has it changed, like, your business for finding out by the new up-and-coming comedians? Has it kind of helped you more? To be able to no, I, I, I think it's helped. It's helped everybody because you think about it, now you're probably watching this on your phone mm -hmm. where 10 years ago you didn't watch things on your phone you mm -hmm. watched them when they were on tv mm -hmm. so now with youtube and instagram and everything you're getting stuff on your mm -hmm. phone all the time mm -hmm. so it's giving people with talent an opportunity to create their own audience okay. you don't have to be on television you can have your own Instagram account, and if you can, like Little Duval, and you know so many people, like mm -hmm. an example would be Jess Hilarious. Mm -hmm. Jess Hilarious had all this following on social media, and then boom, she comes to the club, sells it out, sells okay. it out. So there's more acts now that can become famous because of social media, because it's all about exposure. Okay. You know, if you see somebody and you're watching, man, that guy's so funny, or that girl is so funny, and then boom, hey, they're at the store to want yeah, to see him. Come see him. You know, so it's 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 a whole new deal of uh, giving people with talent an opportunity to, you know, really expose themselves and create their own market. Okay. Well, let me ask you a couple of um, introspective questions. Okay. Um, First off, I'm going to really reflect. This is a very, he's a very young man. Uh, let me start off with this question. Very young man. But what would you tell your younger self, maybe 20 years ago, about this business? Well, here's the one thing that I'm proud of. Okay. It's, you know, and this is good advice for anybody. Mm -hmm. When I started this club, this was my dream. I wanted to make it go. Come hell or high water, okay. I was going to make it go. Mm -hmm. I wasn't going to give up. In the beginning, I had four partners. They wanted to close the club. We weren't doing good business. I didn't get paid for six months. I mean, but I believed in it. Okay. Never gave up. Okay. Never gave up. Okay. And, and that's, if, the, if you have your dream, no matter what it is, you can't give up. Okay. And so we just kept going. Okay. You know, and, you know, my family, when the club burnt down, we could have easily gave up. You know, it's too hard to come back. But we didn't give up. We fought back. We fought back. The city gave us the small business of the year oh, okay. in 1994 mm -hmm. for coming back. So don't give up. That's, you know, the, the, the main thing, I think, was don't give up. Always think of your customers, take care of your customers, because here's another thing. You know, Birmingham, we don't get a lot of tours. Okay. We don't get a lot of people coming in from out of town mm -hmm. like other towns. Mm -hmm. So our market is pretty much just the Locally, people that yeah. are here. Yeah, okay. Where, you know, you might be in Atlanta or someplace where you're getting all these people coming yeah. in. Yeah. It's a different thing here. Mm -hmm. So take each customer is so important that, you know, you want to always do the very best you can to make your customer happy. Mm -hmm. Because if, if you become unhappy, you're one less. And then you're going to tell 15, 20 other mm -hmm. people, well, yada, 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 yada. So we always kept that in mind. When there's complaints here, my wife calls them. Mm -hmm. Cheech will get on the phone and, and call them. So each individual customer is so important to us. And customer service and... What we try to do is make this a wonderful experience for you. That's why a couple of years ago we took all the money we've ever made pretty much and put it back in Yeah, there. it's wonderful, beautiful renovation. And, re and redid it. We actually in one of the rooms right now. Right, but we redid it because our passion is watching you walk out and go, wow, that mm -hmm. was so cool. Or people go out and do a review. Man, we had a great time. I love coming there. That's why, you know, we're here for the money and it's a business. But the passion is, I want to make you happy. I want, I want to put on a show that they're going to go, wow, we're going to come back. And we have a lot of people, a lot of people that keep coming back, keep coming back. And they just love this place. So that's, that's why we do it.
Okay. What message would you have for up and coming comedians? Let's try and get that. Well, right. the up and coming comedians, you have to keep writing. What did I say before? Don't give up. Yeah. You got to get on stage as much as you can. There's mm -hmm. open mics okay. all over the place. You need to you need to treat it like a job. Okay. You know, though, you know, if you really want to be a comedian and you want that to be your job, then you need to be writing, you need to be working on it. You know, you don't need to be just laying around. You got to mm -hmm. work on it. You got to be work hard on it and, mm -hmm. and learn your craft and and, and, you know, it's called show business. business. <laughs> no, but I, I tell them that all the time because, yeah. you know, you can have the show. Okay, you can be the funniest guy in the world, but if you don't have the business end, mm -hmm. and I know guys like that who are so darn funny, but the business, you gotta, if you can do both of them, if you can figure out how to promote yourself, mm -hmm. show business. Okay. And you know what they say. There's no business. Right. Like so, show business. Like show business. It just fit, I had to say. Yeah, <laughs> show business. You actually had a, a, I hope I missed it, hypnotist here this, coming up this weekend or this past week? Yeah. He was here last night. Okay. And uh, he's going to be here again uh, Sunday. Okay. You know, and, it, and it's, you know, going to a hypnotist show, mm -hmm. I mean, it's a great show. People get on stage, mm -hmm. and I think what it is, you know, is there magic involved? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. But I think what happens is, is you relax, and he kind of gives you license to mm -hmm. let go a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like, and I'll give you an example of, of one time that it was, one time he was doing a show, and at the end of the show, he's got all the people up on stage, and they say, we're going to put, he says to them, we're going to put on a show for all these people. You can be whoever you want to entertain them. Okay. Well, this one guy owned a, a hardware store in Tuscaloosa. Conservative white guy, about 35 years old, you know, kind of not timid, but not real, not extrovert. Okay. So he, the guy goes, the hypnotist Gary goes to him, well, who are you going to be? And he goes, I'm George Jones. <laughs> okay. Well, let me tell you something. Uh -huh. This guy started singing. Okay. It was unbelievable. Okay. I mean, the guy knocked it out of the park. Oh, okay. The crowd stood up, went crazy. His wife was in tears. Oh, my. She had never seen him do that. Okay. He comes off stage and he goes, what did I do? Okay. I mean, I just never did that before. That guy, for 10 years, would call me on the anniversary of that and go, man, that was the most fun night of my life. <laughs> so you know, we have all different kinds of shows. We have a uh, we have a mentalist. We have a median. We have karaoke. You know, we did a drag show that was off mm -hmm. the hook. You know, we do shows for everybody. We've done kids shows before. So you know, the deal is we have all those seats. A lot of times people go, Bruce, what's your job?" <laughs> go, My job uh -huh. is to put butts in that seat. <laughs> really, you got to put butts in the seats because if you don't have butts in seats, <laughs> you ain't nothing happening. You making no money. Yeah, so you, so you know, my job is to put the butts in the seats, yeah. and uh, so we try to have something for everybody. So if you look at our schedule. You know, you're not going to come every week. but So you might not come this week, but next week we may have James Gregory and you have old conservative white people. Then the next week we got a hip-hop show. The next next week it's an LBGT show. Yeah, NeNe here went a couple of times. NeNe Leaks from all Yeah, we had NeNe Leaks. I mean, so just, you know, our thing is we provide a showroom and there's different kinds of shows. Don't think if you... Saw it at one time with all the shows are that way. They're not. We're always looking for people. Okay, well, what's some of the upcoming comedians we got coming? February Let's see. Well, March. we got uh, Michael Blackson this week. Yeah. We got one of my all time favorite guys, Earthquake. Earthquake, okay. Earthquake is coming, um, God. Um, January 21st, 23rd. Yeah, then we have Gary Owens coming. Yeah. I was um, you know, and all the, you know, just check the website. I mean, lots and lots of, uh, you know, great people. There's a lots more information on it. We got a new website coming out, and uh, we're gonna restart redoing open mic. Mm -hmm. You know, the another thing is is a guy somebody we should talk about is, a, is Funny Main. Mm -hmm. Funny yeah. Main. Yeah. Funny Main. 
won an open mic contest here probably in 2012. Okay. I'm so proud of him. Because he was always the guy who was always trying something. Mm -hmm. Trying a video, trying this, trying that. Well, about two years ago, he came up with the deal of, you know. The Alabama fan uh, Al watching Alabama games. Alabama fan watching the games. And let me tell you. That is taking him. Yeah, hilarious. Through. He even got his own comedy tour now. Oh, yeah, he no, he, he's got it. And, yeah. uh, you know, so it's guys like Funny Main. We're going to talk about bringing, you know, some open mic here, maybe okay. doing a comedy school. Okay. And it's guys like him. And there's another guy who started here, Terry T, who's, we okay. love Terry T. He's traveling the country now. Okay. So there's a lot of great acts. You know, Eunice Elliott, who's on. Uh, How about you know, 13? 13, who, you know, works here all the time. So it's lots of great acts. Okay, okay. Well, Bruce, thank you again. Let me tell you all that we actually taped this interview yesterday. And because of my mistake, I actually accidentally deleted it. But he came back, and I promise you, it's almost the same thing we interviewed yesterday. <laughs> Plus a little added, added, you know, notions and everything. But I want to thank you for your support over the years. Thank you, brother. Um, you know, I have a lot of people always say, hey, I saw your commercial first, and I'll be like, oh, man. So I always thank you for the opportunity. I really do appreciate you. like you more than a client. You're a good friend to me, and I mm -hmm. just want to tell you that. Thank you for your family and everybody and stuff. So, you all, please come out and support the Start On whenever you have opportunity because I always say, no matter what's going on in your life, you always got time to laugh. You do. And, you know, uh Laughter's good for you, and uh, that's what we got here. So come on, where are you? Yeah, please come out, and for more videos, please check out my website, whatshappeningbirmingham.com, or subscribe to my YouTube channel, because I need a 1,000 subscribers. Please, y'all, please Come subscribe. on, we got to hit that button. Yeah, please, please, please. Thank you all again, and have a great day. Bye-bye. 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 Thank you for watching the What's Happening Birmingham video podcast. Please check out our website, app, or subscribe to our YouTube channel for the latest videos today.